G'day and welcome. Today we're installing the Watson Energy Meter. This is for all electrical contractors out there looking to install the meter on any PV circuits or single phase uh, switchboards. So we'll start off with um, what comes in the Watson in the box. Your box will arrive like this. First thing you come across is the electrician's guide to installing the Watson. Have a good read through that. It's good to get familiar with the Watson before you put it in so you know what you're doing and you know how to explain it to the customer nice and confident. So as we go through the box, we then come up with the Watson unit. Comes in plastic wrap, okay, and we've got our transmitter just there underneath the unit there, which is just under here. So we've got our Watson indoor unit and we've also got our transmitter for in the switchboard. Okay. Also in the box we've got two DC okay, power packs. One is for the transmitter in the switchboard and one is for inside in the indoor unit uh, with the Watson unit. Okay, these units are fully maintained, they're 240 volt power, okay? um, that's for low maintenance so it is really important if you can get the 240 volt application happening, it's a lot benef more benefit for the customer, they don't have to worry about batteries. There is also the option of batteries. Um, if that's the way uh, you want to go, but we do recommend 240 volt power. And also you have a USB port for uh, cable for the indoor unit, as it does come with Holmes uh, software, okay, so that cable is very, very simple to use. So we've gone through all the components in the box, uh, also comes with uh, batteries if you need. Next of all is when we go to install in our switchboard. Um, we've got one here today that we've actually pre-wired, um, just to shorten the video down. Okay, but very simple. What we keep in our truck is a simple tail made out of 16 mil building wire and 16 mil red. Okay, so what it is um, is basically a normal wire join, solder join. Uh, most sparkies will know how to do that. Okay, and the right color insulation tape um, to keep it all red as it is an active. So coming into our main switchboard here, what we have. Okay, I'll explain it to you on the lead. Will be easier. We have our mains circuit breaker, okay, the very main switch. We then have our load circuits, which is this one here, light and power. Then we have our solar, uh, solar supply main switch here on the left. So what you want to do is get these two CT clamps that come in the box also, you want to get them in parallel, okay. So one of them goes on your light and power circuits, okay, and one of them goes on your solar supply main switch. Now what that does is it means these are in parallel. So the current path, which is your wattage, uh, coming from your solar panels or from your light and power, they're in parallel so you don't get a double reading. So you get one reading through this CT clamp and you get one reading through this CT clamp. What, a very common fault with installation is that both CT clamps are in series, as you can see right there. Now what happens then is the current flows through one CT clamp, gives a reading, and the other. Okay, so they flow through both, which gives an inaccurate reading inside. Um, customers can get very confused on what their, their house is actually generating. So just to run through that again, nice and slowly, we've got our main switch, then we've got our light and power circuits. So we've got one, seat, uh, one clamp on that, and then we've got one going over to our solar supply main switch. Very simple. As long as they're in parallel, you can't go wrong. This, the units work very well. So over here, we're just panning close on the, on the switchboard that we have pre-wired. And what you can see under here is we have one CT clip. And just to clear things up as well, we have uh, isolated the fuse coming into this house, the mains fuse, um, so our whole operation is dead. We have tested for dead, um, so we know that we're working in a safe environment. Um, obviously, anything to do with electrical, you do have to keep safety in mind and always work dead. Okay, so what we've done here is onto the main switch, okay, which is this one here. This clamp goes into the main switch, uh, into the main switch, and then we've got this light and power meter, okay, circuits. So that clamp there goes onto your light and power circuit in the center, and then you've got your clamp off to the side for the solar. So when it's wired in there, just to go through it one more time to clear it up, we've got our main switch, light and power, and our solar. What we've also done just over here to the left, we've just cable tied this clip over to the side. It's good to keep them separated. If we did have them slide down together, there could be a bit of interference between the clips. So we do want to get as most accurate reading as possible. 
So we do put it over to the right and we keep them separated. All right, so once we've done that, we know we need to go through now and check all our terminations of our circuit breakers. Uh, one thing with loose circuit breakers, as we all know, is a hot joint and it can mean a call back to the job um, to fix up if we haven't double checked. So we'll just go over and double check. Alright, another handy little tip is the CT clamp for the light and power circuits that we have here. I just put a little bit of electrical tape on to symbolise that that's electrical. Okay, that's our light and power. And then we have our bare uh, plug join there is for the solar. Okay, we know that one's bare. Alright, so the next step is while the power is still off, is putting back on our cover panel. Right, yeah, so what we've just done then in that short break um, was put our panel back on, uh, obviously before we tightened our screws to make sure everything was okay, and we've now got our tails just hanging out here. So we've got our um, AC power and light, and we've got our solar supply main switch. Okie doke. So what we've done is we've turned back on the house, um, all the circuits, and our last test for a plug point in a switchboard is obviously a safety switch trip test. So we just simply trip that and it trips the safety switch so we know all our electrical installation is done correct and to standard. We then write down that recording okay, and keep it with all our records. So now we simply turn the house power back on and now we step over to the component side of things. We've got our transmitter with our DC plug all ready to go here um, and on the front of it we do have renewable symbol 3, 2 and 1. So we've got three phase and we've got renewable. Okay, and there is a button on the front of the screen there that comes into play whenever we're pairing the units. We'll get to that one in a second. And we do have an aerial. It's always good to keep these aerials as straight as possible um, as it does help with range um, to inside. Okay, doke. So we simply go and plug that in to our 240 volt outlet. Okay, so we've simply got that plugged in. We then plug our single phase AC into number one. number one and then we have our solar supply main switch into our renewable okay there is quite a few wires here so when you actually do come to installation you can use double-sided tape um, just to hold this back against the door okay obviously we want to leave it as neat as possible for the customer if they ever have to get in here to look at their circuit breakers we don't want wires everywhere so we can use the existing wires that come with the unit we sit that up bring the wires together and twist them off. You will notice on the front of this transmitter now that the light is flashing. Okay, nine times out of ten, the units will come already paired in the box. If you do come across a unit that's not paired, it will say out of range. Okay, you need to run through a simple pairing procedure. Okay, and what that is, just to make it nice and clear, is you hold down the button until the light glows solid, like it is now. We now have one minute to get our Watson indoor unit and a small paper clip, or I like to use a strand of copper just out of the wiring I have laying around. Okay, we bring it over to where the button is on our indoor unit and push it in the middle, in the middle. It only needs to be pressed once. And what that will say is, hello, Watson. And then it will say, pairing successful. It's a little bit of sun here, but it will say, hello, Watson. And then pairing successful. If you don't actually see the pairing successful, you may have to do that once or twice until pairing successful comes up. It's good to do it outside in the switchboard next to your transmitter obviously um, so, so it gets a good signal and away it goes. So that's our Watson paired there. Okay, 
So now it's time to um, turn the house back on, which we already have, and also turn the solar back on. A lot of your inverters, as you see up here, do have a shutdown procedure, okay? So it's good to follow that uh, in reverse, obviously, to, to get it back on. So you turn on the, a, the DC PVRA main switch, which is the first one. So we come over here and we flick that on. Secondly, is you turn, off, turn on the AC solar supply main switch. So we turn it on. Most inverters will flash doing their checks, and obviously once it locks into the grid, you will see a wattage displayed. Let's pause that quick. Yeah. Okay, so just to wrap up this video, a very simple installation. We've got, as you can see, we've got our transmitter sitting in the switchboard with our wires all nice and neatly tucked away there. We've got our aerial facing up to help with our range. Our DC is into the DIN rail mounted power point that we have installed previously, okay? Um, that will be uh, uh, on every job. If it doesn't have a power point in the switchboard, it will need a DIN rail mounted power point installed or a mounting block with a power point on it. And obviously we have tapped that off the safety switch as you see uh, when we tripped it, okay? So we've got our tail in the bottom with our two CT clamps on it. They've come out into our transmitter and into our power pack. We've then gone and paired it and we've made sure a little glary out here today, but we've made sure that we can see a reading um, on our Watson, okay, which we can nearly match up with our inverter. All right, so in our inverter, we've got 1260 watts of generation, and on here we've got 1240, okay, so that's 20 watts difference, um, which is quite accurate as this is an estimating um, device for the customer just to make them aware of what they're generating on their roof and what they're using inside their house used effectively, the customer can actually save up to 20% extra on their electricity bill. So you know, make sure you reinforce that to the customer. It's not just a device, this thing can save you money. If there's any more dramas, please refer to our websites, either dgelectrical.com.au or Oz Energy or DYO Kyoto, where it's actually manufactured. Any questions, guys, please give us a call. Thanks.